This, this um, uh, spring, I said to my children, I want this summer to change your life. I want this summer to be a summer that you always remember, that you say, I changed fundamentally. I discovered who I am. I discovered what was important to me and what was important to do. Moses gave the Israelites a choice, life or death. That is what I ask my children to do. Before things spiral out of control in the world more than they already are, we must make our choice now. We must know that we choose life. I asked each of my children and each member of my family to read the story of a righteous among the nation. Tell me the story of somebody that saved someone in World War II to become a, a member of the righteous among the nation here at Yad Vashem. The standard is extraordinarily high. You couldn't profit off of it. You couldn't, you couldn't gain anything from it. You had to do it only because it was right and you couldn't just do it once. You had to save multiple people. There was a very small number of people that did it. I read the story of Corey Ten Boom. What a beautiful, beautiful story. The hiding place. My wife read it as well. She is my example. She and her father and her sister is ho who I would hope to be if God forbid there was a dark moment. I don't think there's such a thing as a coincidence. I pick up my phone the other day after Corey Ten Boom had inspired me all spring long and all through the summer and I thought of her. My phone rang and I picked it up. It was a man named Mike Evans. Mike Evans has sold, I don't know, 28 million books. He's a, a journalist, a New York Times bestseller. But he is also has a remarkable personal story and is personally involved with the Corey Ten Boom Center. Our program was set already in stone tonight, but as you see, sometimes the stones topple over. <laughs> because when I got that phone call from Mike, I knew that he had to be here tonight to share with you his story and the story of Corey Ten Boom. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Evans. The first word I heard out of the mouth of my mother concerning Christians, watching television, watching cartoons and Billy Graham came on, she pointed her finger at me and she said, Christians kill Jews. Christians hate Jews. Jesus died, don't dig him up. My mother is a Jew. My mother's grandfather, she told me then, was burnt to death in his synagogue in Minsk, Russia with the Russian Orthodox Church members burning it and screaming, Christ killer. I believed my mother. I believed her when she said that about Christians because she never saw a Christian with love and real compassion. I went to school and was beat up. It was in Massachusetts. I got beat up first for being a kite. I came home and said they beat me up for being a kite and I don't have one. She said, it's a kike, not a kite. It's, it means Christ killer. She couldn't drive, so she asked me to push a grocery cart on Friday nights to the grocery store. And on the way home, they threw to tomatoes and eggs at my mother, calling her a Jew witch. I believed every word she said about Jesus and Christians with all of my heart. To make matters worse, 
my father claimed to be a Christian and he was an anti-Semite. He hated Jews and yet he married one. Friday nights were the worst for this Christian because on Friday nights he'd get drunk at the Twilight Cafe, come home drunk and sit a chair down and punch her in the face and call her a Jewish whore. He called her a Jewish whore because in his drunk rage, he thought she had a son, a bastard me. And I used to sit on the top of the stairs crying because I couldn't protect my mother. And I was so afraid. I was so afraid of my father. I only knew extension cords and coat hangers and a canning cellar he put me in. At the age of 11, in school, they said, what do you want to be when you grow up to the children? I was so scared. I said, 20. My goal was to be alive at 20. I knew this man who went to church on Sundays, and they called him Brother Bob, would kill me before I was 20. That was my goal. On a Friday night, I tried only once to protect my mother. She wore sunglasses because of the black eyes. And I screamed, stop it. When I screamed it, he ran up the stairs in rage, picked me up by my throat way above his head, and I knew I would die. I couldn't do a thing. I tried desperately to get those fingers off my throat. There was no chance. I woke up in the dark, covered with my own vomit, and I prayed my first prayer. And it wasn't a holy prayer. I didn't believe in Jesus. I despised his name because of my father. And I didn't believe his God. I just said this, God, why was I born? It wasn't a prayer. It was really mocking saying, he hates me. He's never called me son. He never told me he loved me. He never put his arm around me and my mother suffering because of me. And in that state, something happened that changed my life forever, completely. I didn't tell it, I've never told it like this ever, and I'm 64. The room turned white as snow, and in the light, I saw two nail-scarred hands reaching out towards me to someone I didn't believe in. And I saw the eyes, they weren't brown or blue, every color in the rainbow was the eyes, and they were smiling eyes. I had never seen a man's eyes smile before, until those eyes. And he spoke and said three words I had never heard before. Son, I never heard that word. I love you, I never heard that word. I have a great plan for your life. Since those days, I've got a new mother. That mother is Israel. 40 years of my life, I've been defending her. And a new father, the God of Israel, who affirms me, he says, you're doing a good job. Cory Ten Boom touched my heart. I told her this story in 1972, and she wept. And she told me her story of saving 800 Jewish lives. But this is the amazing part. She didn't bring them in there and talk to them about being a Baptist or a Presbyterian. She brought them in there, taught them Hebrew, made them celebrate the festivals, and cooked kosher. And at the Yad Vashem ceremony with the ambassador, one of the Jewish girls said, I stood by the house with my mother and I said to the old man, can we come and would you save us? He said, I must talk to God. And I said to my mother, is God in there? He said, I don't know. He came back, he said, God says yes. <laughs> she said, I learned to be a Jew in the Ten Boom home. I didn't know what the Jewish festivals were or anything. The Ten Booms taught me. Most of the Ten Booms died. I'm the chairman of the board, board of the work. We restored in 88. They died saying Jew, Jewish lives. Casper the old man, they said to him, old man, we want you to die in your bed. Just promise us you won't ever try to save a Jew in your clock shop in Harlem, Holland. 
He said, take me now. I would consider it an honor to give my life for God's chosen people. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the 40 years I've been defending this nation, I've never seen this before. I've never seen a man make the risks, take the risks, of his own personal reputation, his resources, and everything he has to defend this nation. I want you to give all the glory to God.